Um, I want to throw out there that um, James Myrtle Boo. was on the app, was on uh, <laughs> TSN 1260 Boo. Uh, with Low Tide. Wait, where's TSN 1260? Edmonton. Boo! <laughs> Talking about, uh, I mean, it was the segment was sort of introduced as you know the Leafs and Oilers for a while now seem like good prime trade partners, but um, the I I feel like that might have been the case a couple years ago or even last year, but now I don't sense that anymore. I don't see I don't see a fit because I don't see the Oilers letting go of pieces that the Leafs would actually want. Everybody on the Oilers seems to think that or everybody who's in Oilers fandom is like, well, we have this defenseman we don't like. The Leafs need just people. So why don't we just send Adam Larson to the Leafs? And Adam Larson at $4 million isn't bad, uh, but he's not. he can't transition the puck. And if you've watched any Leafs hockey in the last few years, they have like two guys who can transition the puck, and thanks to Justin Hall now, three. That's not enough at the NHL level. I'm so bringing on another guy at $4 million – even if it's for just a season, who cannot, yes, he can defend. Well, Cody Ceci could defend, but if you can't transition that puck out of the zone, what use are you? You don't have a, you don't have a role. And so uh, this idea that the Leafs somehow really want Adam Larson, James Myrtle mentioned that he said, you know, they might have 30 guys on their list. Adam Larson's near the bottom. If they end up with him, okay, fine, but they're not going to be thrilled. The Leafs uh, this season on defense were surviving at the cost of thriving. And yes. Adam acquiring Adam Larson seems like it would be another move along those lines. Yes, 100%. So, you know, uh, James did mention that, you know, the Leafs would have interest in Darnell Nurse. Well, who the hell wouldn't, right? The guy's great. Yeah. Um, so that's a nothing sort of comment. People are like, well, uh, it could be, yeah, of course they'd have interest in Darnell Nurse, just like they'd have interest in Alex Petrangelo. They'd have interest in Sidney Crosby if he was available for the right price, but they can't get him. Uh, the one Crosby guy that I Hyman. Who says no? <laughs> Whoa, good point. See, Hyman provides something that the Leafs don't have in abundance, <laughs> though. Yeah, it's, it's true. true. Uh, so then, like, what do you do with the Matthews line? I don't know. Freddie, Freddie Anderson, though, was mentioned as a potential, by low tide, mentioned as a potential candidate to be on the Edmonton goaltending tandem next year. Because I'm assuming, even though we did talk about a couple episodes, how the Oilers would be willing to bring back Mike Smith, let's not pretend that they're like, yes, please, God, give me some more of that Mike Smith stuff. Right? He's like 38 years old. Yes, he's an option. But let's, let's be frank. If they could get a guy like Freddie Anderson for the right price for them, that would make a lot of sense. Freddie Anderson's name keeps coming up. And no, there's smoke here, guys. There's smoke, Steve. There is smoke. And it's interesting. You know, the, the Leafs and Oilers talked about Connor Brown, right? Like, it's, it's obvious the Leafs and Oilers want to make a deal or have wanted to make a deal. for. That was with a G- different GM, by the way, though. That was yeah. Shirelli. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Same GM, though, Adam, along those same lines, same wavelength. We just, we just missed by a few miles. I was thinking another Alberta team. Twitter, when someone responds to an old tweet, it brings up the whole thread. And yes. someone who I follow with a locked account uh, was tweeting at Pierre Lebrun, asking him a question based on a couple tweets he had in April 2018. Hmm. He tweeted, and I, I do not recall this being a thing, but it's uh, Pierre effing Lebrun, so I just missed it. Also worth remembering how hard Calgary tried to land Anderson, as in Frederick. Ducks wanted a bit more from the Flames since they were a a Pacific Division rival. The price was deemed too high by Calgary. The Leafs got him for a low first-round pick, who ended up being Sam Steele, plus a second-round pick in 2017. I think Anaheim wanted to flip the first-round picks with Calgary as a part of that deal. Calgary had a high pick, took Matthew Kachuk, so can't blame Calgary for saying no. On the other hand, how much does Anderson in Calgary change things? And what would the Leafs have done if they didn't get Anderson? Well, the Leafs would have been, would never have made the playoffs in 1617 without Freddie. A hundred percent. You're right. But no one, that was not the expectation. No. Unless you're exactly one person. Nobody would have faulted them for that. No. Exactly. So, but what's interesting though is neither team in Edmonton has a, 
hundred percent starter. I mean, the Oilers should. Mm-hmm. At this point, Miko Koskinen is the starter. It's just if you ask their coaching staff, I, I, I guess not. And Calgary doesn't either, really. They got Neuverth and um, Talbot. It's Riddich, confusing. Riddich, it... Riddich, Riddich. Oh, Annoyed. Riddich. What Neuverth? Neuverth. What? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, no, I, here, let me. <laughs> Neuverth. Dehydrated. <laughs> Woo! What the? Yeah, been okay. a while. Big save, Dave. Dave Riddich. It's because I never say his friggin' name. Um, and uh, Cam Talbot. It was confusing because they switched goalies. And also, I had Michael Neuverth on the brain uh, for some reason. I had my 2018 brain on. Um, the Leafs and Flames were rumored to have a deal done, a significant deal done, last summer. And the person who said no was Nazem Kadri. Mm-hmm. So Brad Treliving and Kyle Dubas pulled the trigger. Naz pulled out the Captain America shield and said no. The Oilers and Leafs sounded like they were this close on a Connor Brown deal because the Oilers want offense. Mm-hmm. They want a winger. The Leafs don't have Connor Brown anymore, but they still have what the Oilers are looking for. There could be a lot of all Canadian moves to be made here. Mm-hmm. It's very, very interesting. But the Oilers, the, the, the Flames to me are the far more interesting conversation because – the the flames have something the leafs lack which is defense and the leafs have something the flames lack which is a 50 to 60 game starter Holy. yeah right um whereas i look at the oilers and i'm like guys guys we both have horrible decors <laughs> like yeah. what's okay so what you're the leafs are going to give you a scoring winger or something like that and you're going to give us what right unless you're confident you can get a free agent which the oilers are never confident they can do um, why would you give a significant part of your decor? I would love parts of their decor, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know how the Oilers replace them, and I think they feel the same way, so why would they do it? If the Leafs can dupe them, do it! What's interesting... It. I just, I, it's frustrating. I, yeah, it's, and you're not going to do... If they can dupe them. Yeah, unless, yeah unless looking at Ken a Holland... Leafs... Looking at a Leafs-Oilers trade is is so frustrating because I can't, I can't find a deal... Remember last show where I was like, well, if you did, did, did," and now all of a sudden it's a 16 part trade Mm -hmm. and they shouldn't be doing it. The Leafs and Flames, to me, it's a much easier conversation because I think, I think there's an easy deal to be made. Uh, And, and, and interesting with Brad Treliving, because there's been a lot of talk about trading Johnny Goudreau. If Brad Treliving and that team do not do well next year, if they don't get past, if they don't get into the second round, his job there is gone. It's gone. I would argue it should be done this year. I, I don't think yep. that you're wrong, Jesse, but because they haven't done it yet, my assumption is that they're going on going with him. And I, 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 I would agree with you, but, but uh, uh, I think they're going to go with him one more season or at least into the, you know, like the Mike Babcock one more season as in like, ah, we'll give you 20 games. We'll see how the team does. Calgary should do well in the regular season. Now, hold on. If you're Brad Treliving, trading Johnny Gaudreau, unless you get a huge upgrade, doesn't make a lot of sense because you're basically lame duck GM territory, right? Even I don't know what his contract is. It doesn't really matter. You are not going to be the general manager of this team if this team does not go to the second round. You got to win the division. You got to go to the second round. So what do you need to do to do that? Certainly isn't trading Johnny Gaudreau. You need Johnny Gaudreau to perform in the playoffs, but you know he can do it in the regular season. He's got like, is he career point nine three points per game? Like that, that's a guy you need in the regular season to get. That's the first step. So... I don't know if it does make a lot of sense that he gets traded this year. I could see it maybe next year. So in the meantime, Calgary's dealing from probably a, a, a position of strength in defense. I mean, they are, they've got some really good young prospects and stuff that are coming up too. Um, I'd love to see if, if they get the goalie situation solidified there with Anderson and you got big Dave saved to back, big save Dave, excuse me, to back him up. Michael that's, Neuverth. That's a pretty solid. That's a pretty solid looking team. You think on paper? What are the Flames? Don't put Freddie in in any big games. No, I'm kidding. But what? What are, what are the? Oh, <laughs> just don't oh. go to the seventh game, guys. That's it. Uh, no, I'm kidding. That's not fair. That's really not. Fair. <laughs> well, no, it's actually a, it's it. a perfect. It's a perfect relationship because the Flames never make it that far. <laughs> perfect, perfect relationship. So, so here, how do you? Okay, what? One year of Freddie Anderson and one year of TJ Brody. 
What's the Flames' best attribute? Um, there are sick jerseys. Okay. The Flames have great Second. jerseys. The Flames have always had great yeah. jerseys. Having great, great jerseys. players leave and then being forced into retirement and then uh, coming back and honoring them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kai Bosch trades with the Bruins. Um, <laughs> no, so I, they're defense to me. Now, yeah. we, look, we look at the teams that are doing the Metapod thing. Columbus does a good Metapod. Which is what, Steve? You got you to gotta, you gotta explain that to people. <laughs> Not Sorry, everybody watched forget. Pokemon. <laughs> I forget that I've talked about it before. So Metapod is a Pokemon that only can do defense. It has no offensive attacks except for the weird rare ones that can tackle. Now, what they just do is harden and harden and harden, and that's how they defend themselves, basically. Columbus does a good job of that. Now, how do they do that? They have really good defense. Mm-hmm. They have a forward core that buys into that, and they have a good goaltender behind it. What do the Islanders have? They have a good defensive core. They have a good goalie behind it. And they have forwards that buy into the defensive identity of the team. To me, with the Flames, I see a team that could do that if they had the proper goalie. And Big Save Dave has proven he can be that at times, but it's not enough. Frederick Anderson playing behind that decor, if they trade Johnny Gaudreau, and it takes away from their offense, but it provides something else for them. If it provides more of a nuisance, like I think about the identity of the Calgary Flames. I think Mark Giordano, they're good defense. Um, And I also think about Matthew Kachuk. Yeah. If your identity becomes, it's, it's, you come to our building and play us, you're going to have a miserable time. If that's your identity, I think it gives you a better chance of winning. Does Johnny Goodrow help with that identity? I don't think so. And I'm, this isn't a Tyler Sagan situation. Um, although now that, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, we're talking about a player who fans love, but the organization views is kind of a pain in the ass, but he's extremely talented. <laughs> How do you get fair value for him? Johnny Gaudreau a little older than him, and he doesn't have a Stanley Cup. Tyler Sagan did uh, when he was moved. Different situations, but still. I do see a situation where they could trade Johnny Gaudreau and become better. Um, it just depends what's coming back. They're, they, they need an identity. We keep, keep talking about this with the Flames. I don't know what they are. They, so if they trade Johnny Gaudreau, it's not necessarily we, – we keep seeing these deals where we're like, oh, my God, they got fleeced. And then everyone just seems to have a career year after that. If the Flames can find a deal for him that gives them an identity, not strengthens it because they don't have one, if they can make a Johnny Gaudreau trade that gives them an identity, I could see them making noise next year. 